Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about mutagenesis and going through an example of mutagenesis. Mutagenesis is a process by which the genetic information of an organism is changed via mutation. We can do it in the lab through chemical, irradiation, or insertional methods. So why do we need to perform mutagenesis in the lab? The process is a useful way of determining the biological functions of genes in an organism to produce mutants with altered phenotypes and physiological responses. For random mutagenesis, we can use a variety of different mutagens. Organisms are exposed to mutagens, and then the mutants with desired traits are identified and selected for experimentation. For example, we can expose bacteria to UV radiation, or Drosophila to x-rays, or even expose mice to certain chemical mutagens to get the phenotypes we need or the mutants we need. We also have site-directed mutagenesis. This type of mutagenesis induces site-specific changes in DNA. It's a method to create specific or targeted changes in our plasma DNA. We might want to do this to study changes in protein activity, to select or screen for specific mutations at the DNA or RNA level, or to introduce or remove certain tags. Now that we have CRISPR-Cas9 technology, we can do some really specific edits of the genome of organisms in vivo. Arabidopsis is one of the most common model organisms used in the lab. It's generally pretty small, it has really fast generation times, it grows well in the lab environment, and the entire genome of Arabidopsis thaliana has been sequenced. If we wanted to use a chemical mutagen, for example, the MS method, to generate a mutant in Arabidopsis, we could go through this process. Now, random mutagenesis is not as popular anymore as site-directed mutagenesis, but I'm going to show you this particular process as an example for getting our phenotypes that we might want. First, we would incubate the seeds in the chemical mutagen, then we would plant the seeds and screen for desired traits, Finally, we would grow the selected candidates to maturity and then retest the phenotype in the next generation. The EMS method, or ethylmethane sulfonate, is an organic compound that produces random mutations in the genetic material through nucleotide substitution. So let's see how it works. First, we take our seeds and we expose them to our chemical mutagen. This is going to cause the alkylation of guanine. With this change, it can now pair with thymine, but not cytosine, and through DNA repair, the original GC pair is then replaced with adenine thymine. When we get the mutated strand of DNA, this is going to then affect the mRNA, which will later affect the individual amino acids, bringing changes in the protein structure and function. So what does this mean for the organism? How do scientists find the mutant phenotype they need through a random mutagen screen? Well, after we expose them to the chemical mutagen, we could plant the seeds and screen for the desired trait. Maybe we would get some loss of function mutants, but maybe we would get some novel mutant phenotypes. So it all depends on what we're looking for. Maybe we'd see increased flowering, or a different response to plant stress hormones, or increased growth, or different types of development. All of these would be caused by alterations to the amino acids. Some of the phenotypes are really obvious, and we could pull those plants right away. Others would need more genetic crosses, or a different type of measurement. So think about how you would measure if you're looking for a specific phenotype. We can't look at all the plant cells under a microscope. So if we're looking to measure something like transpiration to select for our mutants, think about ways we could measure this. For one example, if we were looking at the functioning of proteins related to the movement of guard cells, what we could do is use infrared thermal imaging to measure the leaves that are the warmest. A plant that doesn't open its stomata under normal conditions would lose less water through transpiration. When plants transpire, leaf temperature drops. So we use that infrared thermal imaging to measure the leaves that are the warmest. With the thermal imaging, we can really easily distinguish these mutants between the others in a wild-type population. After we select our mutants, we're going to grow them to maturity so that they can be crossed. And if we start with several tens of thousands of seeds, we might find a few that are actually fertile and can pass the heritable phenotype onto the next generation. We'd then find a few that meet our criteria, and so we would cross them and retest it in the next generation. Now we've got our mutants to study. We can consider crossing our mutants with wild-type plants to determine if the trait is dominant or recessive, we could cross the mutants with each other to compare, or we could run bioassays or determine cell phenotypes under the microscope. So think about what you would want to do with your mutants after you've done a random mutant screen. Now that you know a little bit more about mutagenesis, think about how it can be useful in the lab and what type of mutagenesis is the most useful to you. Thanks for watching.